But I remember my dad, when I was a little kid, taking me canoeing, and he would have me paddle the canoe, and my dad would throw a cast net for our food off a canoe. So, I mean, that's that just puts you... I remember him telling me, you know, over there, over there, putting him on the fish when I was a little kid. I've been fishing most of my life. My grandfather, um, he always took me fishing. He used to, when I'd get in trouble back in like elementary school and stuff, I'd get suspended a lot. And my grandfather was usually, both of my parents worked, so my grandfather would usually, I call him my papa. My papa would come and get me. And uh, he took me fishing a lot. Me and my papa spent a lot of time fishing. After high school, I had looked into going like Edison Community College, but I said I was gonna put it off for a year and I got a job and uh, started selling drugs, so it um, never did go to college. And just started getting in over my head. One o'clock in the morning, you know, driving around. Um, and I just remember thinking there's gotta be something more than this, you know, it just, it seems partying, it seems like that's where it's all at. It's fun for a little while, but it's just, it gets old and it's, you start to realize, I think the things that you're losing because of it. Um, I got uh, busted for selling cocaine. I got pulled over one night and a guy that I was, um, and, you know, associated with, he had uh, set me up or wire and stuff and set me up for uh, sales charges of cocaine because he had gotten some trouble. and. Uh, so I didn't even know I had warrants or anything. I got pulled over, I had drugs on me. So it all pretty much came crashing down. I uh, got busted, went to jail. My bond was high, so there was no way I could get out. And um, I, there was a group of guys in there that were doing a Bible study. And just, I could see genuine people, they you know, were admitting, because almost everybody in jail says they're not guilty. But it was just guys admitting that they messed up, just trying to better themselves and I, said I want to give this a chance, you know, so give God a chance. But I, well, I had started going to your guys' church and I was living in Northport at the time and I was still doing drugs a lot. Um, but I was, I was reading the Bible and I was watching a lot of stuff on TV, Christian shows, different um, pastors and stuff on TV. And it was really, I guess, really calling to me. You know, I knew something it was definitely, I still wasn't strong enough to get away from the drugs. I was trying to stay away from it, but I'd still slip up a lot. And, uh, but I just knew something about it. I remember telling the guys I was on a construction crew and I remember we used to all, the whole crew used to, you know, smoke pot on the job. And it was, that's just how it was. And I remember telling them guys that uh, I couldn't smoke with them anymore. And they said, why that, why not? And I said, because I read that my uh, body is a temple, you know, and they're like, what? You know, I'm like, that's crazy. But I, I remember then really trying, you know, really trying to do it God's way, trying to not do that stuff anymore. And I, I'm sure I probably slipped after that a couple times, but it was really just, I was starting to realize that it wasn't what I was supposed to be doing. And even when I would do it, like the harder drugs, I was doing meth a lot then. And I just, I'd do it and then I'd think about it and I'd regret it. I, you know, I just knew that I wasn't what I was supposed to be doing. Um, I never had a good relationship before with my parents because I was always trying to hide stuff. You know, you're just kind of, you push yourself away from everybody when you're doing drugs because, you know, I guess you know it's not, not good and you know that your family's not going to approve of it. So you obviously, you don't want to come around them. You don't want them to see what's going on with you. So you, uh, you get close to the people that you think are your friends, but really they're just in the same situation you are, so. Man, and you know, I know what my mom had to go through. You know, my mom always came up to the jail and saw me and, you know, really, it, um, I know it's rough on your family, your close family when you're getting in a lot of trouble and doing that stuff. So it was just, I don't know, that was really, really something that touched me when she had said that she could see what was going on in my life. And I told her that I'd, Met, you know, found a really good church and a really good group of people, and she wanted to come check it out and see what it was about. Um, yeah, I know in my relationships, uh, especially with women, I uh, in the past before Christ, I really treated women badly, and uh, it was it's stuff that I'm ashamed of. But I'm glad uh, God has brought me away from all that. Since I've been baptized and really gave my life to the Lord, 
I really see my friendships being a lot stronger. I think I'm a lot less selfish than I was before. I know my parents, I have the best relationship with my mom and dad that I've had in my whole life. I mean, I never, never was as close to my mom as I am now. And my dad too, I talk to him all the time. We just, we get along real good. They're, they're really proud of me now. So, Jesus means you know, pretty much a, a new chance at life for me. This is the way my life was going before. It's a, just the slate got wiped clean and I, I get to start all over again. And it's, I guess it's good to have that I've done what I did because I got to learn from it and, and help other people in the same situation maybe, so.